Welcome back to The Nation and welcome to Education Minister Hekia Panata. Hello Minister, thank you for coming in this morning. I'd like to pick up with something that Shane Jones said in that report a little earlier and he said being in Parliament is akin to taking part in a blood sport. Would you agree with that? Uh, no, not really. I, I, pr I find it a profoundly stimulating environment. I think the debate is really important. I think transparent accountability to the public is really important. Um, you know, it's a particular work environment that doesn't suit everyone, but I, I enjoy it. OK. You were born in Ruatoria, I think, 1958. White Little Bay, in fact, but uh, Ruatoria is close enough. OK. And your, was your childhood a typical childhood for a young Māori girl growing up on the East Coast? Um, I don't know because it was my childhood. Um, I'm part of a very big family. I've got lots of brothers and sisters and lots of cousins who were very much part of our whānau network. Um, both my parents were very involved in education. My father was, um, was uh, taught at the local secondary school. My mother helped found play centre in Rotoria and after that when Kohanga came along was involved in that. Aunties and uncles were all involved in education. Um, I think we were pretty much imbued with the idea of a good set of values, hard work and a great education. Given that background, many people would be surprised that you never stood for Labour. Oh, I don't know about that. I mean, um, the values of the National Party are what resonate with me and my family, which is that, you know, we, we've got to earn and uh, build a productive economy. Um, family are the cornerstones of community, education and personal responsibility and accountability. Um, you know, all of those things I feel very comfortable uh, in the National Party. And saying that, you know, you have mentioned in the past that, you know, in your, in your childhood you'd have family that it's at times was uh, reliant on uh, the state for help with income and help with accommodation. Yep. And I completely, I completely support the arrangement we have in New Zealand where this, um, the state is there to lend a helping hand, um, but a lifeline, you know, not a lifestyle. And I think that one of the things I said in my maiden speech was that one of the reasons I came to Parliament was to fight dependency on the state, was to get government out of our lives, was to create an environment in which which people are capable of making decisions for themselves, earning the level of income they want for the quality of life. And to do all of that, my own experience is, you have to have a good quality education. So how Māori are you? Ah, I'm very Ngāti Parau, that's what I've been born and brought up with, with, um, with Ngaitahu from my father's side. I've grown up being very comfortable in um, Māori milieus as well as, um, you know, mainstream and overseas. Um, I speak Māori not as well as um, others would. I made the commitment that when I became a mother, my daughters would grow up uh, bilingual and they have done that. I'm very involved um, in my whānau and my whānau give me lots of advice uh, about what I should be doing in education and what my government, our government should be doing as well. So do you support Māori seats? Um, I support them as long as Māori want them. I think that there is a very clear history as to why we have them. I personally have chosen not to stand in them. That's a decision I'm comfortable with for me. And what was that based on, that decision? Uh, because I've, I've always um, spent my working life on the interface between Māori and Pākehā issues about how we build a stronger New Zealand. Um, for those who want to stand in the Māori seats, um, I absolutely support that because it's redressing a historical exclusion at the point that Māori as a population no longer want that to be the case, then I think that's appropriate. So, but your support for Māori seats puts you at odds with many of your colleagues. Why can't you convince your colleagues the importance of Māori seats? Um, because I have um, other issues that are of greater priority for me. Um, and really? in particular, yes, really. My priority is five out of five kids achieving an education. My own personal experience and the experience of my family is that with a quality of education, which every New Zealand kid is entitled to have wherever they live. I come from Rotoria. I went to Manutahi Māori Primary School and Ngata Memorial College. I didn't know I was going to what are probably decile one schools because the focus was on giving us a good quality education. You're also a rarity in the National Party because you are Māori and because you do have that background. So why couldn't you be perhaps a stronger voice advocating for Māori and Māori seats? 
Uh, because I am advocating for Māori, which is the liberation of having an excellent education so that they can make choices for themselves about what is right for them. There isn't one kind of Māori that fits this kind of box. Sure. I am me. Um, I'm very proud that I'm Ngāti Parau and Ngāi Tahu. I'm equally proud that of my Scottish ancestry and my Irish ancestry. I am a New Zealander with all those wonderful characteristics. But the thing that gives me the choices is the quality of education I've had. OK, would you like to see National Standing a candidate in Ikaroa Rāwhiti? No, I wouldn't. Why? I'm very comfortable with our party's policy. But well, wouldn't you but want you to see your party to, represented? You seem to think that the only way Māori can have representation in Parliament is through the Māori seats, which by definition are seven out of a Parliament of 122. Well, it's a pretty good way of them getting representation. And that's great. But, but we are a heterogeneous and diverse society, and the opportunity to stand in whatever way we want is one available sure. to us in our democracy. But it gives the impression that National, you know, it's just not a seat they're worried about. It's not um, something that they care about. That's, it's a huge electorate. We've made more gains in terms of Māori achievement in education in the last five years than Labor did in the nine years they did and in the holding of Māori seats. We have grown our economy by 3% when the rest of the world is struggling. Okay. We have done more treaty settlements as a government in the last five years than Labor did in the nine years they were in. I would argue that real and sustainable change that benefits Māori has occurred under this government. OK, you have become one of the government's most controversial ministers. Hindsight's a fine thing, but do you think you were right to take the education portfolio? Yes. I, After I, three years? I, I, when I first decided that I would run for Parliament, um, I think one of the very first speeches I gave um, about what portfolios I was interested in, it was education. Um, and, and I love the work that I do, and I understand that um, it isn't agreed by everyone. But look, education is important, and everyone's had one, and everyone, as a result, has a view on it, and they express and, it. And everyone's had a different level, as well, of education. Correct. Would you agree that rich kids, but actually it's a reality, rich kids in New Zealand do better in our education system than poor kids. No, I wouldn't agree with that. Um, what I would say, and what's really clear from the evidence, because if you look at the distribution of top scholars in New Zealand, for instance, they come from a range of decile schools. Sure, if the cream does at, rise to the top, um, but there are still poor children in this country falling that, through the system. To argue that is to say that income predetermines the quality of education you can have. It, it can, it can determine living, zoning, though, doesn't it? It can determine zoning. Zoning is a different argument because zoning is about um, managing population. People live in wealthy areas. There are good of schools in wealthy areas. there are greater areas. benefits. That's absolutely true. There are. But to argue that there's some ineluctable um, connection between income and quality of achievement condemns kids who come from poor hey, homes. Are you prepared to do anything about zoning? Zoning isn't the issue. What the evidence is really clear about is the two in-school um, contributions that make the biggest effect on achievement are the quality of teaching and the quality of leadership. The next out-of-school one is the strength of engagement of the parent of community with the school. Now, all of those are completely possible with zoning. The latest NCA results show some schools are getting pretty good results. Mm -hmm. Why then are you moving the focus to charter schools? Why not look to strengthen what we have? Why pull 19 million out and throw it at charter schools when schools are doing okay? Our schools are doing okay, but I would like every school to do really well and for every child. Why not strengthen those schools? And why and go are. off on John Banks's idea of charter schools? Nine point seven billion dollars in this year's budget. We've increased the budget in education every year for the last five PPTA years. PPTA would argue that you know, with the increases supposedly this year, inflation is going to cancel that out. Ah, oh, but that's not true either. In the last um, five years since we've been in government, on average, the um, increase to schools has been three percent. It's been ahead of inflation. Okay. This year's budget. I announced 1.9%. Forecast inflation is 1.8%, but actual inflation is 0.9%. Okay. So we have continued, actually, we've funded 30% more than when we came into government in 2008. Charter schools, we've made a provision of 19 million. One of the reasons is, why we're a world class education system and it is explicitly recognised okay. is because of the diversity of options we have in our system. We have faith based schools, we have total immersion Māori okay. schools, we have co ed schools. And Charter a, schools, sure. a handful and in of Christchurch, them, in, in September, in Christchurch, option. you said 13 schools 
were to close. 30. And 18 were to merge. That's what you said September last year. And then there was an uproar. What was going on at that time inside your ministry? Um, so let's step back a little and see what we're trying to do in Christchurch. No, I want to ask what's going on I'm in the going ministry. To, but context is everything. Yeah, sure. But right? and we know that that changed. We know that things are happening differently now in Christchurch. Well, no, but it was I want always to know what case, happened in the ministry at the time. It was always the case that there are 215 schools in the Christchurch network. Sure. There are 9,500 vacant spaces, which is the equivalent of the entire student population sure. of Sure, and it was a city that was an uproar. We all know about that. And, and we so all know the background to, to why. Sure, but yeah. what was going on? Was there something of a revolt from some people within your ministry at that time? No. Why did Leslie Longstone leave? Well, you'll have to put that question to her. But you must know. You had a, you know, she was a woman who was a key part. You don't just accept a resignation and then she goes. You no, must have known why think, she left. I think, I think last year, everyone saw that there were a number of challenges in the education portfolio. And those and challenges were always going to be there. Backtracks and a number of screw-ups, most people would say, as opposed to challenges. Well, people can say that, but of course, underneath all of that, achievement has been growing, which is the primary function of education. Quality of teaching and leadership has been improving. Sure. We've established a cross-sectoral forum of all these diverse voices who speak on education. They all come. I don't compel them to come. Sure. They want to be engaged in the process. Nonetheless, you have had uh, at times, uh, a high staff turnover. I think December to March, you had four key people that, that left your ministry. <laughs> to be the ministry? To the left, left, who no longer wanted to work for you. They left. Mm, well, we've That's had the, the chief executive has left. Can you, at times, minister, be a bit of a bitch to work for? I don't think so. I have very high standards and very high expectations. I've worked hard all my life. This portfolio deserves every effort, every Does child that make you a feeling. hard person to work for, though? High standards, oh, pretty oh, unrelentless, don't you know suffer what? fools. I, I would be very happy for you to interview anyone who's worked for and with me. Very happy. People who have left my office have left for the usual reasons. End of their secondment. Even Lizzie Promotion. Longstone? Well, I think we need to distinguish between my office and the ministry. Okay. I don't do the employment in the ministry. Do you have and two any, have left for love. Do you have any regrets about the way you've handled anything? Look, I've learnt lessons and, and, and everything is continuous improvement. I have learnt lessons and I have applied them. Christchurch, when we announced in September, we made mistakes. We have continuously improved okay. that ever since. You're an ambitious woman. You've just said that. Hard taskmaster. You have high standards. How ambitious are you? What's your ultimate ambition? Is to um, um, create sustainable change in the education system. Is to ensure that five out of five kids can be educationally successful. Is to ensure that we increase our current system, which is two out okay. of, one out of two Māori achieving, two out of three it's, Pacifica. We have to get everybody okay. successful. It's an open secret that John Key has said that he thinks you could one day be a leader of National. Do you aspire to be our first Māori female Prime Minister? I aspire to be the best possible Minister of Education. I genuinely want to see... Is that as high see... as it goes? Was that a yes I, or no? Look, I love what I do and I do what I love. In every part of my career, I have aspired to do better. This, in this um, time now, I am focused completely on how we get the best education possible for every New Zealand kid. I'm going to take that as a yes, Minister. I'm working to be a really good <laughs> Minister of Education. All right, Hekia Parata, thank you for your time, thank Education you. Minister. Appreciate you coming with us in studio.